one of the nation's preeminent research labs, is at the University of North Carolina. Is one of the people leading that lab and who some have dubbed a, quote, coronavirus hunter of sorts, Professor Ralph Barrick. Our group has been studying uh, uh, coronaviruses for about 35 years. first 20 years of the 21st century, we're looking at five or six emerging coronaviruses that came out of bats. Puoi costruire in laboratorio un virus indistinguibile da uno naturale, giusto? It is correct, you can do it. Uh, you can leave no trace that it was made in a laboratory. The scientific technology today is so good that you can make a whole genome of a virus with no scars, no seams or anything. It looks perfectly natural. It's pretty easy to model at least four or five different mutation sets that you could put into the receptor binding domain of SARS-2 so that it can use the mouse ACE2 receptor. So we changed it because... It's and the best use of a gain of function thinking process I've ever heard. Are supercharged lab-enhanced viruses becoming a global threat? Gain-of-function research? The so-called gain-of-function research is known as gain-of-function. It is a type of research that makes pathogens like viruses deadlier or more infectious to humans. The researchers intentionally modify the virus in lab experiments to give it new functions. Gain-of-function research seeks to make a virus more easily transmissible between humans to increase the severity of the disease it triggers or to make it resistant to existing treatments or vaccines. Sounds crazy. So let's look a bit more closely at how gain-of-function research is done. One method is to genetically re-engineer pathogens by inserting genes from one virus into another to make it more aggressive. Another simpler method is called animal passaging. Researchers inject a virus into ferrets or so-called humanized mice. These mice have been genetically manipulated to have human lung receptors. The virus undergoes slight mutations as it passes through several generations of mice. The scientists select the strongest mutations until the virus eventually becomes transmissible to humans. Well, we've been well funded by the National Institute of Health for about six years now working on this particular. Is key. His lab has been funded to be able to do this work. And it's so important to have NIH and other funding to be able to do this kind of science. The reason being that accidents happen, and they happen a lot, even from the highest security labs. The University of North Carolina has long had extremely sophisticated coronavirus synthesis and modification capabilities, and the university reported a total of 28 safety incidents involving genetically engineered microorganisms to the NIH from January 2015 to June 1, 2020, six of which involved coronaviruses, including SARS, MERS, and new coronavirus.
At a growing number of laboratories, scientists are experimenting with dangerous viruses and bacteria. Our investigation has found hundreds of accidents have happened at other laboratories with little public scrutiny. And even when research facilities commit the most egregious safety breaches, federal regulators keep their names secret. Mei 